In this video, I'm going to be doing just a simple watercolour painting, uh, just to show you things don't have to be too complicated. And first of all, I'd like to start with an interesting sky. So using my uh, Bockingford, this is actually rough, rough paper, £140. Just using some um, yellow ochre, which I like to do, and then just add plenty of water, just to get that colour mixing together with a bit of uh, burnt sienna. You can see the bit of red there, and then just a bit of sort of a greyish mix. This is actually something that was on the palette, so I'm just using using that with a touch of blue, and it's come out at this colour, which I'm finding quite nice. And then just just a spray just to let things really move and mix together and give me that interesting sort of look so like i said this is um quite a simple scene uh, i didn't know what to paint as i started this and at this point i just knew um, just to do the sky and then see how i felt and see what would happen and um, just to keep things simple um, so it's it's really about being free and just uh, letting Letting the paint do the work and uh, just just see what happens. So you can see how much water I'm using. I'm just going in with some clean water and just touching the pigment and just uh, slightly blending and the colours into almost nothing. This is quite a, a nice technique if you want to get some nice crisp clean clouds you can just go in with some tissue paper and just lift some of that colour and uh, bring it out. With a 2B pencil I'm just going to add um, some sort of buildings, maybe they're cottages or just, just some houses, uh, some buildings just to uh, look nice in the landscape. Again, please do give me a like if you're uh, enjoying this video so far. Um, you can see the pretty much the full um, full painting process. I have um, just I have shot on the video quite quite a lot, so it's it's not a very long video, but you can see most of the process as I do it. Um, so please do give us a thumbs up. Uh, any comments are welcome as well. Any suggestions. Um, I do really appreciate that. And as always, if you're uh, familiar with my videos, I'm not after anything perfect. I'm not after the perfect um, buildings, anything like that. But you can see... Um, Hopefully you can see how the sky has turned out. It's quite a nice um, setting, quite a nice backdrop for this scene. Um, and then I just want to add some sort of distant hills. And I want to really keep these um, in the distance. Um, so I'm starting off with a pale sort of um, greyish mix, the same colour that I used in the sky. And then I'll be interested introducing some different colours as I come forward. Uh, so on the left hand side, just using a touch of green into that. So this hill would be just slightly more in front of the hill on the on the right. And then just, I'm not bothered about these uh, touching and blending and, and doing all these things because you don't want any sharp sort of um, edges unless you do want um, that separation. But for this for this one, I'm just keeping things really simple and just just letting all the colours sort of merge together, and uh, there's not a hard transition from one colour to another. So it does give that nice um, distant sort of feel to it, and that's exactly what I'm after.
So I've left the buildings just for now because um, I'm going to keep those kind of a clean, almost white colour. And just popping in some trees just to add some um, interest. And um, I like to add, drop different colours in. So I've got my first colour, which is a yellowy, um, a yellowy mix of uh, it's um, yellow ochre and sap green. So it's mostly yellow, and then just dropping bits of blue, uh, bits more sap green in there, and that just I'll let those mix on the paper, so it gives that much more generic sort of feel. Um, so I like to do that in in my paintings. And then maybe you noticed um, as it started to come down, the paints started moving down onto the, the grasses in at the bottom of the trees. Um, I just run a brush across. So that gave me a little bit of um, shadow, a little bit of a base to these trees. And that's quite a nice handy tip to, to use. Um, it's just quite a nice thing to do. And then just popping in some more trees along the... Um, sort of... Um, along the the base and then popping in little bits of uh, green here and there just to give bits of details bits of foliage details um, you don't have to do every last leaf on these trees just an indication on the outside just a few little spots and uh, and there we go so it is really quite simple you don't have to complicate things um, just keep Keep the colours interesting, mix them um, as and when you can, and then uh, that just gives it a much nicer feel. So mostly for this, I do like to just let the colours mix themselves. Um, I do some mixing on the palette, but it is nice to get some of those colours. You can see in the trees there, you can see the blues, the yellows, the greens. So it is a nice effect. Um, so just a, a nice red sort of roofs for these buildings. And again, um, I'm not really that bothered about the perspective, maybe slightly off, um, but you can get away with it in these scenes because this could be uh, quite old, these buildings. So sometimes you can get wonky buildings and not quite straight. So um, you can get away with that quite a bit. I should say as well, um, for my brushes, I do like to use these mop brushes. And this is um, my Da Vinci uh, mop, which is quite a, just a smallish round, which I like to use as well. Um, but I do like the natural uh, uh, squirrel mops. So they're quite, they, they hold a lot of water and they're, they're good for the skies and um, quite large washes. Um, so they do hold lots of water and they do have a nice um, point on those as well so just adding a bit more dark just um, bring these trees a bit more more forward and you can see um, how the the hills in the background have really set back it, it really does give a, a nice sense of depth in this scene and uh, the darker you add the trees in the foreground the more that sort of pushes the hills back so I think it's quite an interesting scene. Uh, I do like the sky, the different sort of tones and different colours in the sky. And I've left left some of the whites as well, which is quite nice. 